victims of mass atrocities, systematic abuses and war crimes, amongst others. Transitional justice aims to put victims and their dignity first. What are some of the mechanisms in place to help ensure transitional justice in West Africa and a country like Nigeria, for instance, which has been faced with insurgency problems like the Boko Haram issues in the Northeast? The Center for Democracy and Development, the ECOWAS Commission, along with other civil society organizations, are here for a two day regional civil society organization meeting to X ray transitional justice mechanism. Present here are representatives from West African countries. We hope you get a better grasp of what transitional justice is as you follow the discourse. You cannot transit justice without having access to justice as a right of the affected victims and vulnerable. So that's a very, very important complementary objective that must go hand in hand with transitional justice. There must be access to justice for affected victims and all vulnerable parties in the whole thing. Because when we talk about transitional justice, we often talk about not just the pursuit of justice, but the interest of justice has been very, very critical component of transitional justice. The respect for the rule of law, promoting enduring peace, and importantly, addressing reconciliation. The transitional justice process within Liberia since the end of the civil conflict. Um, let me just first of all establish the role that Equa has played in the Liberian conflict during and after. When the civil conflict started in Liberia in the 1990s, things had broken loose and there was no hope. But the first hope that came to Liberia was through the intervention of Air Force. And from my reading, I think it was Air Force's first operational mission. That is, Air Force deployed the ECOMO, that is the Economic Community of West African State Monetary Group. That was in the 1990s. And they landed in the midst of fire. And the purpose of ECOWAS intervention was basically to help end the conflict in Liberia immediately, ensure a lasting peace, and restore hope for Liberians and other nationals that live in Liberia during the civil conflict. We, we, we want to actually uh, thank Air Force for that immediate intervention she did, and the records are there. So there's no way that we can move out as a country when we don't always come back to Air Force to seek their support in helping us address the conflict issues. Because those conflict issues are still alive and active. During the civil conflict in Liberia, there were mass atrocities that were committed by various fashions. In fact, Liberia have many fashions that you can imagine within the African context when it comes to conflict, in country conflict. There were systematic you know, atrocities that were committed, massacres, leading to summary executions, and of course, rape was on the increase, torture, recruitment of child soldiers, and of course, sexual violence was on the rampage in among other violations that took place in Liberia. And that has actually impacted Liberia negatively. The idea that um, Liberia went through a conflict and after the conflict, nothing had been done to address the conflict, continued to roll back on Liberia even in current time. That has undermined the current human rights situation making it shadow to even to even put campaigners in a position to make to press for more human rights promotion and protection. So maybe in Liberia, working with the colonial government, even the parliament to see how we can get the 
TLC um, recommendations implemented. And it was a very good if you can share with Mr. Okoro to do all. I think we are all on the list set also in the part of the commission so that people can have an idea. If you have raised very important points, and I'm sure when we are summarizing, there are facts that we have to break up and show up to the for discussion. Thank you very much. My name is Chesimo Mustafa. Uh, here in Nigeria. Uh, I want to talk on the chief in on the issue of uh, the financing. As uh, rightly pointed out by the finance in the course of the uh, opening remarks, that the preparation after prosecution is the most important aspect of TJ because uh, survivors and victims demanding from complete situations. Well, first of all, after prosecution, need to be repatriated. And the repatriation, as we pointed out, uh, depends on the situation each society or each community by itself. What applies as a repatriation to community A may not necessarily be the same to community B. For example, with our experience uh, from Northeast Nigeria, where the insurgency, the private insurgency, is still being contained, uh, we had the experience that some people are not only really looking after the material or monetary compensation as the vacation, as they are pointed out. So, for example, want to see that their community and dignity are restored, most importantly, before talking about any other thing. So, the restoration of dignity of victims and survivors taking them out to their communities, native communities, is far more important to most of the people who have the opportunity of contacting with in our various IDB camps in Borno than immediate material compensation. So, it's very important when it comes to the uh, reparation, certain uniqueness of the communities or the victims or survivors of conflicts should be taken into consideration. The role of the civil society, what can civil society do to complement you know, the government, the sub-regional and the continental issues? Having said that, I think the issue of political weight has been raised. And somebody was also talking about, you know, you know, my brother, Liberia, uh, parliamentarian, say the was parliament and the rest of them like that. You see, I'm from African Union. One of the challenges that we have raised now is the issues of poor implementation of transitional justice initiative. It's not only totally in the Okuta panel in Nigeria where the implementation and it covers across spectrum across the continent. That is what we have noticed, that the issues of poor implementation. But thank God that there's beginning to be something like decentralization of initiative to bring about in the implementation. And thank God, you know, the, the, the executive secretary of the Cardinal Initiative, Transitional Justice, is also here. We are in Nigeria, we are beginning to see some initiative of decentralization. These are some of the things that we need to take into consideration. Then the issue of resources. When you look at it, the resources, look at Liberia alone. The $500 million for 25 years, where are the resources? But now, I think what in our own little initiative and thinking, for example, thank God that we now have, you know, the African Transitional Justice uh, Fund, Legacy Fund. In our own little way, in what way can we provide technical assistance to some of the initiatives? Like, for example, in documenting, you know, some of the initiatives, those people with challenges that have not been officially recognized, what can the civil society do in this area to complement the little effort of the government? For me, as civil society, as somebody coming from the African Union, this is what I'm expecting to hear from this type of initiative, from this type of meeting. Because if we continue to lament, to lament with regards to the poor implementation of member states, in what way the civil society is coming up with initiative to support the government and debate some of these challenges. And the final thing that I wanted to talk about has to do with uh, uh, the roles of the civil society in uh, in complementing that of, this, uh, of the governments much more than the way we are currently doing. Let, let me give you one example. And because of our times, in, 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 uh, in the Gambia, for example, we are also working with a particular civil society where we are beginning to see civil society doing some secondment of their technical experts into the government. These are the type of things that we will want to see and also probably maybe the discussion with the African Transitional Justice Fund 
where you recognize some technical experts and you have identified loopholes in the government process and you are able to bridge this gap. We know that so many of you here, you are technical experts. What is bad in makes you coming to the government to also provide technical assistance? And these are the type of things that we are currently in Ghana, in, in Gambia, with the civil society organization. I do hope that this type of mechanism also could also be utilized under the ECOWAS. We are this platform recognizing individuals who has the technical assistance and that can be seconded so that we are not just talking about the limitation of the government alone, but we can actually within our own you know comfort recognize our expertise and also do some second. And I think we should be able to do that with the support of the initiative of the fund that is presently coming up. Because the whole essence for us is also to ensure that people have trust in the system, and that is part of trust building in the system that people who have committed gross human rights violations will actually be punished. So the example of Charles Taylor, the Charles Taylor is an example. John will speak to it in at the CDD when they started the NCICC. They were able to organize and get Charles Taylor uh, arrested and out of the country through collaboration internationally and locally and impressing it on our government to get that um, um, done. Then monitoring the implementation of TJ has also become something that is actually relevant. I think the example of Liberia is now very instructive 14 years after. We are now just talking about what do we do with the transitional justice report, community report, the crime report. The same in Syria law, we are talking about how do we get this into the constitution. So it should get us thinking that as a group, as a constituency, how do we start working immediately to redress the wrongs of yesterday? Because most of what we are dealing with now, they are like forgotten conflicts. So you see customers, it's always been there. It's been active the early 2000s. In the spring to the elections, it became a campaign issue in Senegal on how to deal with the customers. The Côte d'Ivoire issue has been there since 2009-2011, we are grappling with it. 14 years of Liberia, the same of Syria. Nigeria is planning us to take care of dealing with the insurgency. And don't forget, we still have a report which spans 1960 to 1999 before the coming of the civilian uh, administration. Yet to be implemented, yet to be published. Niger Delta is there. Guinea and that is Kamara. I forgot to ask my colleague why the lawyers are not even winning the case and successfully prosecuting in even here at the FOR's court, also as a form of assistance to help we think how we go ahead with this in the next three years, such that when we are gathering in three years' time, we are talking of positives, we are no longer talking of challenges that we have actually uh, encountered. So our mission is not to think within the box, it's no longer to even think out of the box, but to think higher than the box in the next two days. Thank you very much.